All right. Good morning. We are entering into the second half of the course. Good job on the busy midterm week last week. And if we look at our course outline, which we always follow, we are introducing Assignment 5 today. Assignment 5 is a themed full color spot illustration. So a full color spot illustration, I'll turn my camera on here so I can show you some examples. Oh, not that. Let's see. There we go. So a full color spot illustration is a free floating design, right? Kind of like that day of the dead one we were looking at when we were doing logos. So I start with a sketch, and then if I'm doing it uh, traditionally, I'm going to ink that sketch with just a permanent black ink pen, like a Sharpie. And I usually do that with tracing vellum on top of the sketch, right? Then I can scan that in and turn it into clean vector line art through image tracing in Adobe Illustrator. So for this semester, we're doing the theme of vote. And this was my sketch. I have an optimistic one and a pessimistic one. These are reversed in the camera, of course. And then what I do is I put tracing vellum over them. Tracing vellum is this clear plastic. It's a really good type of tracing paper. Tracing paper is cloudy. Tracing vellum is, is even and clear because it's made of spun plastic. But you don't want to get it wet because it works. Okay, then I ink them. This is just inked with a Sharpie. And then I scan that. So what do we end up doing with these? Well, we're going to color them. And we're going to add text to them for the next assignment to make posters. right? So here is one from a previous semester. And here was the, the line art for that that you scan. And then we add color right? and eventually text. Now, this is used in all kinds of advertising and digital imagery. And it's called a spot illustration because it's free floating. So it's not like a comic book page. But I like to show you a comic book page because it's the same art techniques. But imagine, instead of this comic book page, you just had a t-shirt or a sticker of Spider-Man like kind of floating in the air, right? Then it has its own shape. It's not cropped on any one side. That makes it a spot illustration. So we want free floating spot illustration design. And we have a theme. We always have a theme because art directors always give you a theme. You, of course, can make your own ideas for spot illustrations anytime you like. Your own characters, your own stories, your own social commentary. But our theme, as November approaches, the first week of November, in an election year is vote. So if I go to unit modules, we're going to see the full assignment and past examples, and we'll see the theme. So we're in unit 11 after the midterm critique. Thank you guys for participating in the midterm critique. You have your scores now on your approving ground three in the rubric and then on your midterm critique on the assignment in your gradebook. So what are we working on for this unit? We're making our spot illustration. That's the only deliverable. It's worth three points. It's due November 4th, a week from now. And we're going to use raster programs to digitally ink and layer the color. But we're also going to turn that line art into a vector, just like we did with our logos so that they're fully scalable. And there are three components you're going to be turning in. So here is a sketch of a spot illustration of Vladimir Putin, right? Kind of mashed up with He-Man. And he's crumbling a Ritz cracker under his foot. So here we have the sketch. Here we have the clean line art. And here we have the coloring behind that line art. Notice that the line art at the end of the day might be a different color than black. Right? We'll learn that technique 
Those are called color holds. Or in this one, this past student example, very clear, we have this nice little kind of mini Cthulhu creature. We have very clean line art. Notice line art can be thick or thin or varied. And then digital coloring and how the black line art is still there, but it just tur is turned to blue for the digital coloring. Here we have a little emblem design. A little Nico honor badge, Nico combo tiger face uh, badge, sketch. In your line art, you might decide to edit things out, like the little helmet. I edited it out here. And then the digital coloring. Past student example. Sometimes students like to, to sketch with varied colors. You can sketch digitally, you can sketch by hand, whatever is most comfortable to you. It doesn't really matter the resolution as long as you know your plan enough to do clean line art. And we can do clean line art by hand, like I showed with the tracing paper. I have Sharpies and, trace, and tracing vellum for you. Or we can do it digitally, which I'll be showing you in Photoshop with your tablets, which are open at the back. But we're gonna try to turn that into a vector. This is very thin kind of animated line, line width, line art, and then we'd color behind. On and on and on. But notice, even when they're cropped, like in this example, they are cropped with a particular shape in mind. So this student wanted to use their own character, but they didn't want to have to draw the whole body you know, for this spot illustration. They wanted to focus more on the head, but they didn't want just a free-floating head. So instead, they enclose it in a circle, and then they break the bounds of the circle. And that's a very common spot illustration technique. Think of a t-shirt design. Think of a tattoo design. Think of a sticker design. You don't want it arbitrarily cut off, right? You want it free floating. Speaking of tattoo design, that kind of thing. All right. The benefit of this project is once we are done with it, we can use a variety of line art. We're going to learn the basics of digital coloring. This is our, our cheat sheet for it. But you can use any form of digital coloring, even if it's just flat color. All of that from here on are forms of digital coloring. And we're going to be learning all of them. I have an exhaustive explanation of it. We've seen some, some student presentations on it. And this is the professional practice, right? So this is by Danilo Lanes, their illustrations. This is by Nathan Yoder, their illustrations. This is by David Sasella, their illustrations. And here you can see how it is a vector in the line art before color is added, which is what we're going to try to do. I'm going to try this new program and see if we can get it to work, but it might not work. And then here are some past student examples. So this was for a theme on sleeping, promoting sleeping. Right? So sleep was the theme, because college students don't get enough. So this was their inspiration, like online fan art and tutorial demos from an artist they like. And then they did their sketch, they refined it into digital line art, and then they colored it. Right? And you can notice they stole a lot of the colors from their inspiration, which is just fine. Color inspiration is actually a pretty good way to go about it. All right. We can see more past student examples here, but this semester's theme is vote. And why? Well, because right now we're just like kind of inundated with political season and it's stressful and there's a lot of, you know, people with opinions all around us all the time and it can make our own opinion kind of hard to deal with. But the good thing about actually voting, which I encourage everyone to do, and since we're, uh, an early voting site this semester, it's very easy to do. It just kind of makes all those worries go away when you actually take action towards it. So why not spread that message to, to the world through your artwork? And you can either be optimistic or pessimistic about voting, but as long as you're reminding people to vote, I think that has a positive impact in the world, right? So I have two sketches here. This is the one I'm going to do for this morning section. This is the one I'll do for the afternoon. And it's just a simple kind of sticker design. You do not need to include text in your image because we will be adding text 
in the next assignment, right? But if you do incorporate it into the image like I have done here, don't make it separate from the image. All right, so to start, we start by posting our sketch and our name. So the first requirement is our spot illustration sketch to make sure it is a spot illustration, that it's not cropped off. So that's requirement one. And you can sketch digitally, like I said. You can sketch with the pencil and paper I have in the room. You can sketch in your sketchbook. What I'm going to do is just take this scan I took of my sketch, and I'm just going to crop it. Or copy it. Open a new one. And save it. I'm going to call it Carl Assignment 5 Sketch to the desktop, just as a JPEG. And then I need to create, get back into this, an Assignment 5 folder. Now, for those of you that aren't so used to imaginative drawing. I just want you to maybe find some inspiration, things that would be interesting to you. Maybe you really like teddy bears, and you're going to use a teddy bear for this spot illustration, and then use some text to go with it to fit that theme of voting. I don't know. Maybe it's a teddy bear with an Uncle Sam hat. But whatever it is that you like, I want you to try putting your personality into it with this. This is not using other people's pixels, but it can be inspired by things you like. So now I'm going to take that sketch and put it into my Assignment 5 folder. So that's our first step. And then that is the sketch that will be the first thing you post for your assignment. So three requirements. We start with the sketch. The next video I'm going to start showing you how we can do the, the different ways you can do digital line art of this sketch, which a practice that's called digital inking. All right. Now, if we go to our links in the class, you're going to see a link for a site called redbubble.com. And I use this as an option for you. You're not required to do it. But you are invited to create a free account on Redbubble. Oh, this is always fun. Little captures. And this allows you to take your spot illustrations and then use them in all the flexible ways that they are used in our culture from one good digital file. This is the advantage of doing it as a digital file is it can be used for things like a t-shirt, a mouse pad, a hat, a poster, a journal, all these different things. So here is my Redbubble account. And of course, this is not the class. This is something else, right? This is your own personal kind of option to sell work or show work. So I'll view my shop here. Yeah, so for t-shirts, for all kinds of things. So for instance, here's a spot illustration from a, a past example. This was during the pandemic. <laughs> so you can turn it into stickers, for instance, right? And all these other kind of products. And magnets. So it's, but it all has to do with it being free floating. Ooh. On tote bags, on face masks, <laughs> and even tiled up on fabric which is actually a really, really helpful skill to be able to do fabric designs. Because if it's a free-floating illustration, then it just has all of this versatility. So here it is as a scarf, and you can see